but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yes, 
as there is, there's healing for your soul. Through all your sorrow, there's healing for your soul. Through your grief and pain, there's healing for your soul. Remember the happy times, there's healing for your soul there's healing for your soul bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name surely we have come to this place today not for a funeral but for a celebration a celebration of one that did what she knew to do in her heart to serve God to give him all her best so if she was sitting out there before you right now she would say hey this is not my funeral this is my celebration because I've finished my course and I've kept the faith and now I'm home I'm home. Hallelujah. So we thank the Lord. Uh, at this time, we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to have a selection from Deacon Leroy Mosley, and then I will come back with the Old and the New Testament Scripture reading. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. For he is great, and he's great to be praised. We give honor to the Spirit of Christ, the beloved pastor, Pastor Maxwell, Associate Minister Drake, and to this bereaved family. It's an honor to be at the house of the Lord one more time. God is good, isn't he? He's worthy to be praised. I want to say to the family, cry. But it, when you finish crying, bless his holy name. For Isaiah 26 and 3 says, he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. Rejoice, Paul said. And be exceedingly glad, for God is good. I've had my share of sorrows. I've had my ups and downs. But through it all, I won't complain. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights. But when I, I look around, things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days I, I won't complain sometimes the clouds hang low till I can't hide see the road I'll ask God a question Lord Lord why so much pain but he knows what's best for me although my weary eyes 
they can see. So I lift my hand and say, Thank you, Lord. I I won't complain. God has been good to me. He's been good to me. More than this in you, the world will ever see. He's been good to me. He turned, he turned, don't you know he turned all of my midnight into day. So I lift my hand and say, thank you, Lord. I've been lying on, thank you, Lord. I've been misunderstood, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. But God has been good to me. He has been good to me. More than this old world, all you can ever see. He's been good. Me, yeah. Oh, he drives oh, my tears away. Turn my midnight into day. So, in spite of what's going on, in the midst of my circumstances, in the midst of my situation. Lift both hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah. I heard David say, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He's good. He's good. Uh -huh. Yeah. I won't complain. I heard somebody say one time, even if you complain, ain't nobody listening to you no way, so you just well to give God glory. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to go into the reading of, this, of the scriptures. Our Old Testament scripture will be coming from Psalms 23. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell 
in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our old, our New Testament reading will be will be coming from uh, the book of St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. St. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. Let not your heart uh, be troubled. Ye believe in God, uh, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. The Savior said, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? If the family would indulge me just a little bit, if you don't mind, can I read verse 6 also? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. May God have a blessing to the reading of his most holy word and bless the hearers of his word. Now we will have a prayer comfort. I guess that's me too. <laughs> All right. Now we will have a prayer conference by Reverend Drake. After the prayer conference, we will have a poem by Journey Potter. And after she has come in, we will have a selection by Sister, Sister Kathy King. In that order. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you today. We thank you because of who you are. God, there's nothing that was done for us by you that you had to do. But because of your love, because of your mercy, because of your grace, you saw fit to make us one of your ch children. And so, God, you give us those things that we need, even those things that we desire. So help us to learn how to give you glory and to lift your name up on high now God as we go into this homegoing service touch the family of sister Viola God we ask you to just bless them now in a mighty way let them understand God that her work is finished and she's just going back to where she really belongs so God we ask that you would just touch them now let them know that it's up to them to live the life that they may one day be reunited with her. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And now, God, we ask you to comfort now all those that are mourning. For you said that weeping endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Which means for me, Lord, that we only have one minute to, to weep. But after that, joy. So, God, we thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you, God, for all that you do. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Christ, we pray. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Amen and amen.
Hi, my name's Journey, and I'm the great-granddaughter of Viola Jarvis, and I'm going to read The Virtuous Woman and a poem called No Tears in Heaven. So I'm going to read The Virtuous Woman first. A virtuous woman is far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household. The children arise to call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Now I'm going to read a poem called No Tears in Heaven. There are no tears in heaven, nor grief of any kind. I leave this final teardrop to those I've left behind. Though, though, though absent from the body, I am present with the Lord. The joy of my salvation is now my full reward. Thank you. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart be lonely, longing for heaven and home, since Jesus is my portion, a constant For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Oh, I sing because I'm happy. Lord, I sing because I'm, I'm free. His eye is on the
Amen. Amen. He watches over me and you. At this time, we're going to uh, have acknowledgments and the church papers uh, by Deaconess Rosalind Briggs. And after that, we will have a silent reading of the obituary. Good morning. Good morning. Although your work on earth is done, your life in heaven has just begun. Your struggles here were hard and long, but they're over now. You're finally home. Certification papers. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of Sister Viola Lee Jarvis. The officers and members of New Beach Grove Baptist Church in Newport News, Virginia, feel that it is befitting to express our sympathy to the family on the passing of Sister Jarvis. Whereas Sister Jarvis was a lifelong resident of Virginia and was raised in a Christian home, she professed a love for her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Viola joined New Beach Grove many years ago with her husband, the late trustee Edward Jarvis. She and her family reunited with New Beach Grove in recent years. Whereas Sister Jarvis demonstrated the Proverbs 31 woman, her kindness and warmth was extended throughout her family and friends. Her great cooking and presence around the home will be missed by everyone. Therefore, be it resolved that this virtuous woman lived a fruitful and meaningful life, which will be an example for generations. Be it further resolved that this true warrior traded her sword for wings. We bow in humble submission to him who loves us and encourage the family to hold firmly to God and his word as found in Psalms 23. We wrote your name in the sand, but the waves washed it away. We wrote your name in the sky, but the wind blew it away. So we wrote your name in our hearts, and that's where it will stay always. Family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. Willa G. Maxwell's pastor, Rosalind Briggs, church clerk. With sympathy for the loss of your mom. Her voice will echo in memories you hold. Her smile will warm you through stories retold. Her love will touch you in spirit each day. Her life will be treasured in beautiful ways. Praying you're comforted by memories and hold close in God's love as you grieve. Our thoughts and prayers are with you, the Miller on Strong fam family. As long as there are memories, loves live on. That's the Curtis family. On the loss of your mother, she will always be in your heart. The Sylvester's. Heaven is so much greater than anything our limited minds can ev ever imagine. This came from Connie and Woodrow Smith. With sympathy in your loss, life is a journey. Life is a journey of sweetness and sorrow, of yesterday memories and hopes for tomorrow, of pathways we choose and detours we face, the patience and humor, courage and grace, of joys that we've shared and of people we've met who have touched us in ways we will never forget. Although no words of sympathy can ease the loss you bear, still may you find some comfort knowing others truly care. Newbie. In sympathy. Seeds of love she left behind, Lisa Ashley. In memory of your mother, how beautiful is a mother's love, how blessed are the lives she touched. With deepest sympathy, love Linwood and Yvonne. In sympathy and prayer, the goodlies. She is in a better place after a job well done.
we're gonna ask the musicians to give us a little music while we uh, do the silent reading of the obituary. from you. Can we get a praise the Lord from you? Hallelujah. And I just I just did that because Sister Viola just wanted to know if anybody was at her home going service. Can you say praise the Lord? Can you say praise the Lord? They're here, Sister Viola. At this time, we're going to move on. We're going to have a selection uh, from uh, Sister Shanita Camp. After she sings, then uh, we will turn it over to our pastor, the Dr. Willard Maxwell, for our eulogy this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, this is a celebration of life celebration of life, a homegoing celebration. She lived a good life. Hallelujah, somebody. How many can wave their hands and say, thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord, for everything you did for her. Hallelujah. This life is not over. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. We're going to have a little church in here. If y'all don't mind helping me out just a little bit and joining with me. Tell 
no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more dealing with COVID. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody shout, thank you, Lord, for everything you did for her. Hallelujah. it's always good to be counted in the number among the living. Amen. So we thank God for that. We are here for the home going. Amen. Of Sister Viola Lee Harris Jarvis. Amen. I knew her name, but I ain't want to leave out none of them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But we thank God for you and we are here for a celebration. We know that she lived a good life. Amen. And we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with God, amen, but we still mourn, amen, because we will not see her anymore. We will not see her and be able to spend time with her as our sister, our mother, our grandmother, our cousin, our aunt, our friend, our confidant, or whatever it is she would have been or was to us, amen? And I know a lot of times people say, if you knew the Lord, if you knew the Lord, you wouldn't cry because you know she's in a better place. Amen. You just let them super Christians know that Jesus Christ himself, amen, even wept. Jesus even cried. So we, we give you permission to mourn. We give you permission to cry. But what we do not give you permission to is to be depressed. Amen. Because we know one day we're going to close our eyes. Amen. And we won't open them again either. But we know because we know who Jesus is. Amen. We will see her once again. Amen. Now if you don't know Jesus, you need to get to know him because you ain't going to see her no more if you don't know Jesus now. Amen. I'm going to leave that alone. Amen. If you would, if you would, we're going to be in the book of Luke, the book of Luke chapter 13, and this may find it, some may find this odd to be a funeral sermon, amen, and I find it odd as well, but we do whatever God tells us to do, amen. Luke chapter 13, verses 11 through 13, and again, before I get into the sermon, all the families here, the Jarvis family, Harris family, all of you, we are here for you, amen, however you need us to be, Amen. Uh, whether you're a member, whether you're not, we are here for you, amen. And even if we weren't trying to be there, Sister Donna, make sure we are, amen. So we're going to make sure that we take care of you. Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. And again, before I get into the sermon, it's been good to see uh, some of our friends and family, amen, who we haven't seen in a while. And sometimes even in the midst of bad news, at least it brings us together. Amen. Luke chapter 13, verses 11 through 13, read, And behold, there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity 18 years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Lord, please help me bring a word for your people like only you would have me to bring. Allow me to speak what thus says you and not what thus says Maxwell. Reduce me, Lord, and magnify yourself within me so that they only see you. Hide me behind this sacred desk even in the midst of my infirmity and my shortcomings. We thank you, God. For this day, even though some of us are mourning, we still have a peace and joy that surpasses all understanding because we truly understand there's a hope and there's a knowing in our spirit that to be absent from the body is to be present with you. We thank you, Lord, for the time that we were able to spend with this great woman of God. We thank you for the brief 90 years that she was on earth with us. But we know one day we will see her again in eternity. 
walking on the streets of gold with a new body not made by human hands. We thank you, God, for your peace. We thank you, God, for your joy. Even in the midst of our sadness, even in the midst of our grief, even in the midst of us not being happy, even in the midst of us crying, we still have a joy in our spirits because we understand who you are and we understand whose she is. She belongs to you and you will never bring any harm to her, only your perfect will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. This woman in the scripture was a worshiper. And that's why I had to pick this particular woman, amen, because we know that this woman of God was a worshiper. Uh, this woman of God was a worshiper in this Bible, and it was her habit to worship, to seek the face of God and looking after her life. Therefore, she was there. She was supposed to be uh, on this particular uh, Sunday in worship. And because she was there, uh, she was going to receive a very special touch from God. She didn't know it yet, but she was. Why her? Uh, because she was sincere, ever so sincere in seeking God in his care, this woman in the text. She had a curvature of the spine. This sounds like some form of arthritis where the joints of the spine fuse together. Luke, the physician, gives the medical description of his day for the disease. She had been deformed for 18 years. Two facts need to be noted. She had been afflicted with a spirit of infirmity. Jesus had said the spirit was an evil spirit of infirmity. She was a daughter whom Satan hath bound. Thus, the woman needed spiritual healing as well as physical healing. Him calling her daughter of Abraham meant she was in covenant with God, which means she was equivalent to being a Christian because Christianity, as we know it, came after the death and resurrection of Jesus. Which means, yes, saints, demons can torment us just like they torment other folk. Now, you cannot be possessed because the Holy Spirit lives in you, but you can be oppressed. God would never have given you spiritual weapons to cast down strongholds uh, from wicked places if you were immune to the attacks of wickedness. See, see, don't think that every person that, that has an infirmity, every person that has a sickness is somebody that did something wrong. I remember the disciples said when the man had a problem who was blind from birth, and he said, look here, look here, uh, what, what, who sinned, him or his parents? And Jesus said, no one, but, but this happened so that I may be glorified. So many times people look for who did what and how this happened and what happened. And truth be told, if you knew this woman of God, come on somebody, you would know that the affliction or the infirmity did not come from God. Even Paul said that there was a messenger sent by Satan uh, to buffet him, which means to make him better. But anyway, this woman in worship was in worship despite her deformity. And no, her deformity was severe. severe. She was all bent over and unable to rise. The pain was sometimes severe. Yet her habit to attend worship and to seek the favor and to help God all her life, she couldn't stop. She kept on calling on Jesus. This woman's faithfulness and worship to God, despite deformity and pain, attracted Jesus. See, I believe God was attracted, come on somebody, to this woman of God. God was attracted, hallelujah, to Sister Viola because she loved him so much. I know she had dementia, but I, I wasn't around her the last few days or years of her life. But I can tell you this, because of what I knew about her, I bet you she said Jesus, even though she couldn't remember stuff sometimes. I bet she said hallelujah every now and then, even though she didn't have a memory all the time. I bet you she, she kept testifying find about the goodness of God even though she couldn't remember all the time but anyway he was moved with compassion she received Jesus word and touch this was crucial because Jesus had called her to come to him she had to respond his call he could not come for her she had to respond to him Oh, y'all don't hear me. See, she had already, Sister Viola had already responded to Jesus years ago because she had already accepted him as her Lord and Savior. So even in the midst of her not remembering everything, she had already accepted the fact that he was her Savior. 
She, but, but, but after the woman came by seven, when she obeyed, Jesus spoke the word, the good news to her, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Keep in mind that her problem had been both spiritual and physical. Jesus reached out and touched her and she was made straight. She stood upright. She experienced both the power of Jesus, word and touch. But note this, it was because she came when Jesus called. See, see some of you are upset because uh, when people go when God called them, and I'm not talking about go to preach, I'm talking about when God called them home. See, 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 she was able to hear God and still worship with him. See, this is what I saw in my vision. I could see Sister Viola, I could see that Jesus saw Sister Viola's pain. But although Jesus always sees everything all the time, sometimes he, he is anthropomorphic, which means sometimes he takes on the human characteristics. And, and right now, I believe he noticed her pain. I can see her walking with Jesus and talking with Jesus. I believe her and Jesus walked and talked for a long time because she understood that Jesus would walk with her and talk with her. And he told her that she was his own. I believe Jesus said to Miss Viola, We've been walking and talking for a while, and you are closer to my house than yours. You know how sometimes you walk for a long way, or you traveled a long way, and maybe you stayed over somebody's house a little too long. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a friend, and you stayed over there a little too long. So they said, you know what? Why don't you just stay over here tonight and don't go home? I believe she walked with Jesus for a while, and Jesus said, you know what? You're closer to my house than your house. It's getting a bit late. Come on, somebody. You fought the good fight. You cooked and gave your family joy. You helped keep them together for 90 years. I need you to cease your work. I need you to stop working. I'm going to let you know, well done, my good and faithful servant. I'm going to make you absent from your body. I'm going to keep you right up here with me. You've already done everything you can do. You raised your children. You helped your grandchildren. You helped your great-grandchildren. You stuck together with your sisters and brothers through mess. You've been in dementia for two years, but you've still been faithful to me. You still called on me. You still did what the good deacon said. Although you had some bad days, your good days outweighed your bad days, and you didn't complain. She was a good woman of God. And I believe that even though she was suffering, even though she was in pain, she stayed faithful to God. And she didn't stay here. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 let me stop right quick. See, see, you thought she stayed here for two years of suffering because God wanted her to stay for her. Oh, yeah, y'all yeah, missing it. See, God had her suffering for two years for you. Oh, y'all don't hear me. See, God said that he allowed uh, uh, Lazarus to stay in the grave for, for four days so that glory may be brought to him. Yeah, yeah, y'all missing it. See, he allowed her to stay here, go through the dementia. Oh, y'all don't hear me. So some of you all could get your heart ready. I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but, but this ain't no typical funeral sermon. I understand. Don't, don't get mad at me. Count that to the Holy Ghost. She allowed her, he allowed her to go through the pain for two years so some of you all could see what was going on so you could get your life right. Because I'm sure if you looked at your life and not even talking about Jesus, if you compared your life to her life, you understood that her life was a little bit better than your life. And some of y'all, her life was way better than your life. And so if you can say that, my goodness, if this could happen to her, if she couldn't go through something if she has challenges see some of you all complain when you go through some mess but but it's only a light affliction see the bible said that weeping only endures for a night but joy comes in the morning now i know some of us have been in some long nights but joy comes in the morning and your good days will outweigh your bad days. And if Sister Viola, the way she lived, the good life she lived, if she goes through something, you better stop getting mad when you go through something. 
Because truth be told, stop talking about how if this happened to that girl, uh -huh, I know what happened to her. God mad at her girl because you know what? God don't like ugly and that's why she going through that. But when you look at Sister Viola, you can't say that about people you don't like because somebody who lived the good life went through the same thing. And you got to understand, stop judging everybody when they go through stuff so you won't be judged. I don't know why I'm talking to you like this, but I got to take it this one more time. See, see, Sister Viola lived a good life, and she showed you that rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. So the only difference is when I go through a storm, Jonah, I know that even though the boat rocks, I'm going to still be okay. Yeah, you see, that's the lesson God wants you to know. That you're going to have some bad days. But your good days outweigh your bad days. And when you have your bad days, don't complain about your bad days. Just thank God that you made it through this bad day because your neighbor didn't. Some of y'all mad because you had the coronavirus, but some folk had the coronavirus and not here. Y'all don't hear me. We, we must have got some complainers out here because I'm, I'm, I'm prolonging this because I thought it was over. But can, can I tell you something? God, Philippians says, do all things without complaining. If this woman of God went through some situations on earth and you know her life. Now, we all fall short of the glory of God, but she didn't fall that short. And if she went through something, you're going to go through something too. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I believe this sermon is to make sure that God uplifts you and God gives you the assurance for you to know that he's walking with you and he's talking with you and he'll tell you that he is, you are his own. But the problem is the same way that God called the lady that had the curb in her spine, even though she had a curb in her spine, ain't, doesn't it seem weird that even though she was all bent over, Jesus said, come to him. Even though his spine, her spine was being over, Jesus didn't walk to her. He said, come here. And when she came to him in faith, he laid hands on her and set her free. I need you to be like Sister Viola, even when you don't remember some of your good days all the time. If you could just keep pressing to the heel for which cometh your help and give thanks all the time. Thank him that you made it through this coronavirus. Thank him that even though you lost your job, you still got a roof over your head. Thank him that even though the food didn't tastes good today you still had enough money to eat thank him that even though your child is bad at least they're not in jail thank him and say you know what although my bones hurt at least i can walk on my own tell god even though my elbows hurt at least i got all my limbs you gotta learn how to thank god in the good days and the bad days you need to be like the deacon just said your good days outweigh your bad days so stop complaining let sister Viola be a witness for you I'm done let her be a witness for you the rain falls on the just and the unjust stop complaining if she went through something you gonna go through something but at least you still here Worrying about and complaining about the fires you went through. At least it didn't burn you up. Isaiah already told you that even though you passed through the fires, even though you walked through the floods, they will not overtake you. No matter what the extreme in your life is, God gives you strength. Because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. What challenge is going on in your life that you whining about? Trust God and watch him bring you all the way through. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the author and finisher. He didn't say he was the in-between. Your job to take care of the in-between. He called the woman to him, even though her spine was bent. He's calling you even though your spine is bent. Even though you got arthritis. Even though you got some type of heart ailment. Even though you have some type of kidney uh, uh, inflammation. I, I don't know. Whatever you may be going through, God is still saying, come to him. He's the Alpha and the Omega. But your job is to take care of the in-between time. Sister Viola was a great in-between time person. 
Even though she was going through pain, she still looked toward the hills of which cometh her help. And she pressed toward him, even though she had an infirmity, even though she had ailments, even though she had pain. Let her life be a testament to you that you must do all things without complaining and understand that the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. The only difference is God is going to let you and cause you to weather the storm. Hallelujah. We're going to call Whiting's funeral home up and they're going to give us some instructions. Amen. I usually don't do this, but if you don't know Jesus, you can come down right now. If you don't know Jesus, if you're watching on streaming, if you don't know Jesus, inbox us and we'll make sure we lead you in the sinner's prayer and introduce you to Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to thank you, Dr. Maxwell, and other noted clergy members in attendance for your words of encouragement and comfort to this family on today. I would also like to thank each and every one of you who have taken out your time to come and show your love and support to this family. All acts of kindness and good deeds do not go unnoted, and the family thanks you from the bottom of their hearts. And those of you that are watching by live stream, I would like to thank you for tuning in and being a part of the services virtually. And I ask before you log off, if you will leave your name and an encouraging message so that when the family looks back over this today, tomorrow, and in the next coming of days, they know that you are here and that you are still standing with them. And to the family of Ms. Jarvis, on behalf of the entire staff of Whiting Funeral Home, it has been a great honor and a great privilege to serve you, but not only you, Ms. Jarvis, with the dignity and the respect that the life that she lived earned and deserved, a wise man once said, for your loved one to be dead is as if they never lived. And Ms. Jarvis lived 90 beautiful years, and she now lives on in the hearts of each and every one of you. So I would encourage you to hold on to the good memories and the bad memories and hold them near and dear to your heart because that would be your encouragement to get you through each and every day. And as a token of our appreciation for allowing my family to partake with yours, I would like to present to you this memorial plaque in love and memory of Ms. Biola Lee Jarvis. My prayer is that this plaque will bring you many days, weeks, months, and years of the joyous and fond memories that I know she has left with each and every one of you. This now concludes the celebration of life service for Ms. Viola Lee Jarvis. God bless you all and may you all go in peace. If I can have everyone but the family to please stand, and if I can have my flower girls to meet me on the nearest wall. Three more ladies who can volunteer as flower girls. Flower ladies, if I can have you to come. 